Hi, and welcome back to part 4 of my tutorial series on using a tree view in Microsoft Access. This part is about adding icons to our tree view. Now, icons are one of the things I really love about the tree view, and no tree view is complete without them. And I believe that icons really enrich your user's experience and feel and make your app look much more professional. In this part 4, I will introduce the image list control, which is also a part of the same library that the tree view control comes from, namely the Microsoft Common Control Library. I will demonstrate how you add images to the image list, and finally how you assign these images to be used with your tree view nodes. First we open up our form and design view, and we then insert an ActiveX control. Insert ActiveX control. Just press M once to go down to those starting with M and select Microsoft Image List Control. There. Just going to move it down here and quickly switch back to Form View and you can see that the Image List Control itself is actually not visible. In this demonstration, I place the image control directly on the form that is going to use it. However, if you have multiple forms that all want to share the image list, it might be a better idea to place the image list on a hidden form and then reference it from each form that needs to use it. Now, with the image list added to the form, we can move on to actually adding the images. I double click my image list. Another approach is to right click, image list control, properties, to access the properties of the ActiveX object and not the properties of the control itself. Before adding the first image, we must decide on the size of our images as they should be presented in our form. Once we add the first image, the size property becomes read only and we can't change it. Fear not though, there are ways around this, but that's really stuff for another tutorial. For now, I'll just go with the size 16 by 16, which is what I think matches best for most tree view applications. Now, I have prepared a few icons and saved them as bitmaps in 32 by 32 pixels, but you could also use other sizes. Note, note that the images I add does not need to be the same size as the size chosen. The image list will scale them to the to the desired size, but of course the best results will be had by using images that match these sizes, or are at least multiples of these sizes. If you've watched since the beginning, you might recall that I had four types of information stored in my requirement table. The four subtypes were document, header, requirement, and guide, so I want an icon for each of these. I click the insert picture, I simply select the first of my icons, then the next, the next, and the last until I'm done. Note that these image files are now embedded, so I do not need to keep track of the image files and distribute them along with the application. That said, it's always a good idea to keep a copy of the image so that you can make changes later if you do need to. Now, I click each image and assign a key to them. This key is going to be used when I reference the images from my code. The first one I'll simply call document, next guide, then header, and requirement. I'll click apply, click OK to close. Now I'm almost ready to go modify my code. First, I need to let the tree view know which image control to use. So double clicking the tree view, image list property, and you can see it's already noticed that there's an image list on the same form. Now image list 7 is not very descriptive, so I'm going to just first say cancel and make sure to properly name my image list control. Image list IL for tree view I'm going to call it. Double click my tree view and select the image list here. Apply, OK. Now we can add the code. So I click the view code button, go down to my module tree view. This is where all the code for loading the tree view is placed. This is the first node I add, that is the document node. I'm just going to add an extra document, add an extra argument, sorry. Simply 
document, that was the key for my document image. Down here, you may recall that based on the type of requirement, I already did a few modifications to the standard node. If it was a header, I made it bold. If it was a guide, I made it blue. And now finally, I'm going to make sure that each type gets their own type of image. Node x dot image equal document, copy this, equal header, equal requirement, and equal guide. Debug, compile, we should be good to go now. Note that there are two ways you can add these images. Once, one way, is directly as we create the node, we can assign the image. The other is down here, where we created the node here, and then we modify its properties based on the type. Let's go see it in action. So now I close my code view, go back to form view, view, form. You can now see that the document has a document node image. And as I expand the node, you can see the header has this type of icon. The guide has a blue circle with an eye for information. Our requirements look like this. You can also see that should I decide to change the type in over here from requirement to guide, hit the save, the icon is automatically updated over here. That was all for this time, and thank you for listening. I hope to be back with part 5 quite soon, in which I'll show how we can use a right-click custom menu to add new nodes.